Um, it falls under the heading of small angle approximation. Um, and I could just give it to you as a formula. I mean, I, I'm actually fine with that. Give it to you as a formula meaning for small angles, these are the really approximations that are roughly valid. That sine of theta is approximately theta, cosine of theta is approximately one, and tangent theta is approximately theta again. And what do I mean by small angle? Um, how small do you think uh, angles have to be for these to be, I don't know, valid within 95%? I'll just give you the number. I'm pretty sure they are valid. If uh, theta is less than uh, pi over 6, then these are valid within 90% or 95%. Um, so pi over 6 or in degrees, if theta is about 30 degrees or less. So it's actually, we call it small angle approximation, but we don't mean super small like 1 degrees. Something can be as large as 30 degrees. So you know, a 30 degree angle is from the vertical, this is about 30 degrees. So it looks like a substantial angle, but this formula will be roughly valid. Let me demonstrate it with the Wolfram Alpha, actually, because you know I have that capability now. Um, that's good enough. So let me just uh, plug in. Um, well, so so well, let me do pi over six so that we roughly know what the number is. That's a 0 0.52 whatever. Let me um, take sine of pi over 6 and divide it by what? Oh, yeah, and divide it by pi over 6 to see how much different they are. It's only different by 5% because sine of pi over 6 is about 95% of pi over 6. And thus it's, it's similar for cosine. So if I do, let me scroll this here. If I do cosine, so let me do cosine of pi over 6. Then, OK, I guess that's not as good as I thought it was. Um, OK, so I guess this approximation, maybe you don't want to hang your head on it <laughs> too much. <laughs> um, um, pi over 12. OK, so if it's a 15 degrees, then it's much closer to 1. Uh, the tangent one, I don't think a tangent one is as good an approximation as sine. So tangent of pi over 6 is about that. So you know, divided by pi over 6, it's off by about 10%. So, um, so you know, I could just give you this formula, and that would actually be OK. For the purpose of what we use this for in this class, if you just leave you that, that this is a um, set of useful um, approximation formulas that applies for something about this. The actual way we would write it down is actually theta much, much less than one radian. And the less it, it is, the better it is. But, um, um, but let me ask you, how many people here have, have taken calculus too? One, two. Yeah, enough of you that I think this longer explanation is worthwhile. So if you've taken calculus two, then you cover the Taylor polynomials, right? How many here remember the phrase Taylor polynomial? Or Taylor approximation, right? They, they cover this in calculus too. If you don't remember it, I, I would just, as an advice to someone who's going to be a future engineer, physicist, this is the one of most useful approximation techniques in all of physics and engineering. And um, I don't know if Wolfram Alpha will give me Taylor polynomials. Let me just try it. Taylor uh, polynomial of sine of x. All right, that's pretty good. So, um, so looking at the Taylor polynomials, uh, it says sine of x or sine of theta is approximately, let's see, theta minus 
theta to the third power over 6, that's actually 3 factorial, plus theta to the fifth power over 120, that's 5 factorial. And you can, write, you can look up or calculate Taylor polynomial for cosine and tangent as well. For cosine, it should be approximately 1 minus theta squared over 2 factorial plus theta to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on and so on. You know, I don't think I remember the tangent one. Yeah, I don't think I remember the tangent one. Tangent one might be, let me write it down and we'll look it up to make sure that I'm not telling you something that's wrong. Um, I feel like it should be one, not one. It should be theta plus theta third over three factorial plus theta fifth over five factorial, maybe. I'm not sure, let's look it up because that's the one <laughs> that I can't do in my head. I don't know. I'm probably not right. I'm pretty sure the first term is right, but yeah, okay, I was nowhere near, near the others. Um, so, <laughs> but that's fine. Okay, so let me, uh, that's fine. Let me just correct it here. I don't know, 15 and 2. But it kind of doesn't matter. For the approximation, um, this is the idea. Imagine you are dealing with a small theta. Once again, we are in radians, so theta is a unitless number. Anywhere from, well, unitless number. So we are dealing with a num unitless number, much less than one radian or one. So let's say theta is equal to 0 0.1. So if you are talking about sine of 0 0.1, so 0 0.1 is pretty small number to start with, right? How small do you think 0 0.1 to the third power is? Like yeah, 10 to the minus three or about one part in a thousand, right? And imagine how much smaller 0 0.1 raised to power of five is. So this is the idea behind the approximation that with each power, the number gets so much smaller that if you retain just the first term that doesn't disappear, that this would be good enough for approximation in most cases. So we are kind of ignoring this. You do the same thing with the cosine. So cosine happens to have a constant one at the very, as the very first term. So if you retain just this, that would be this approximation here. But as you saw, you saw that it's not very good. Then if you wanted to make your approximation more accurate, you would include the first theta squared term. For the purpose of this class, we don't. Um, but there are upper division classes that would uh, try to retain this to have a better approximation. And same thing with the tangent. The reason I never remember these terms is because I never use them. I only retain the first uh, term that's not zero and keep it there. So that's, uh, this is where small angle approximation comes from. If you haven't taken calculus two yet, you know, it's core requisite with this class, so you might not have yet, then you know, when you get to Taylor polynomial, pay attention. This is, I felt like the, the infinite series portion of calculus is actually the most useful part of calculus, that, you know, in just with the hindsight looking back.